In this problem, we want to determine the resultant force due to the two ropes pulling on the bracket. We'll want to express it in Cartesian form using i, j, k hat notation, and we'll also want to determine its magnitude and its coordinate direction angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. So of the two ropes, we'll call this rope number one, and it pulls with a force of 600 pounds. So we'll say uh, the vector f1 has a magnitude of 600 pounds, and we'll call the other rope rope two, and it pulls in this direction with a force of f2 equal to 400 pounds. We'll also need to establish some coordinate axes. So we'll have the y-axis pointing straight up. The x-axis will point down the axis of our bracket. And the z-axis will be orthogonal to the two of them. So the z-axis will come out in that direction. The resultant force is simply the vector sum of the tensions in the two ropes. So the vector, the sum of F1 plus F2. Because FR is simply the vector sum of F1 and F2, to figure out FR and I, J, K hat notation, we first need to figure out the X, Y, and Z components of both F1 and F2. We'll add those to come up with FR. At this point, we know the magnitudes of F1 and F2, but we don't know the directions. It turns out, for this problem, F1, or rope 1, is in the Y, Z plane. And one thing we know is the slope of this rope. So I draw a line parallel to the Y axis and a line parallel to the Z axis, and it turns out to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. We know a couple of things about rope 2 as well. It's not in any one coordinate plane like rope 1, but we do know this angle right here between the y-axis and the rope is equal to 120 degrees. And we also know the angle between the z-axis and the rope is equal to 60 degrees. Three-dimensional problems are always challenging for me to visualize, so I made this model in SOLIDWORKS so we can get a feel for the geometry of the part and just the directions that these two ropes are coming away from the part. So I could go to a side view, for example, and in that side view we could see that rope 1 is pointing straight up and rope 2 is coming out at us a little bit and to the lower right. We could also look at it from the front view to get an idea of the geometry there. If it makes it easier to visualize, I've also included the x, the y, and the z axes and superimposed over the two ropes so we could look at the different directions. If we look down the side of the part, we can see that rope 1 is parallel to the y, z plane. And if we rotate this part and we'll look down the front end of it, we could see that the angle of rope 1 makes a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Here the y axis is vertical and the z axis points off to the left. The x axis is coming out at us. So let's deal with rope 1 first. And we'll want to decompose it into its x, y, and z coordinates. So to do that, we'll look down the front of it. The y-axis is upward. The z-axis is acting to the left. And if you use your right hand, the right hand rule, y cross z, means that the x-axis is coming out at us. We're just, just to confirm that we are using a right-handed coordinate axis. The slope of this rope we know is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So here's 4. Here's 3, 4, and 5 would be the hypotenuse. We don't really need to do this for rope 1, but I'd like to define a few angles, the coordinate angles. And the first angle I'd like to look at is, we'll call it gamma 1, and it's the angle that the rope makes with respect to the z-axis. And we look, it would be this angle right here. The rope is coming up at an angle of gamma 1. And I use the subscript 1 because we're working with the first rope. The second angle we want to deal with is the angle that the rope makes with respect to the y-axis, and this one we'll call beta 1. And on the view to the side, I've got my x-axis to the right, the y-axis upward, and the z-axis is, again, with the right-hand rule, the z-axis is acting out at us. And the third angle we want to define is alpha, so we'll call it alpha 1. And alpha 1 in this case is 90 degrees. The rope is 90 degrees from the x-axis. So alpha 1 we know right away is equal to 90 degrees. And with a little bit of trigonometry, we can show that gamma 1 is equal to the inverse cosine of 4 over 5, or 36.87 degrees. And beta 1 is just 90 degrees minus gamma 1, or 53.13 degrees. There's a trigonometric relationship that relates alpha, beta, and gamma. The sum, the cosine squared, of each of these angles is equal to 1. And what this means is once we know gamma 1 and once we know beta 1, that means there's only one value that alpha 1 could take. 
And from this side view, we see that alpha 1, just by inspection, alpha 1 ought to be 90 degrees. But let's show it mathematically by manipulating this relationship. And indeed, when I do that, I come up with alpha 1 equal to 90 degrees. Finding these angles for rope 1 is probably a little bit excessive because we already know the direction of the rope is in the yz plane and we know the slope of it. But it'll be useful to think about when we move into the second rope, which is a little bit more complicated. And the reason I say it's excessive is it's a, by inspection from this view, we could tell that F1 has no component in the x direction. And we know that the 600 pounds acts 3 over 5 in the y direction, so 600 times 3 over 5, and 4 over 5 in the k hat, or the z direction, so 600 times 4 over 5. Simplifying that, 0, 360 pounds in the j direction, and 480 pounds in the k direction. With that in mind, let's think about the second rope, and let's think about these angles. This angle is the angle that the rope makes from the y-axis. We'll call this beta 2. And this angle is the angle that it makes from the z-axis, so we'll call it gamma 2. What we don't know from the beginning is alpha 2. But it has to have some distinct angle because we've already specified beta 2 and gamma 2. And because it's so hard for me to visualize in two dimensions, let's come back to the SOLIDWORKS model. And I'm going to remove rope 1, so we're just looking at rope 2 right now. So here's rope 2, just again to give you a flavor of uh, what it looks like from these different directions relative to the coordinate angles. To further illustrate this, I'm showing three different views. In the first view, the y-axis and the rope are in the plane of the screen. And when I view it from that way, it makes it a little bit more apparent that this angle is 120 degrees, and this angle is beta 2. In the second one, I've got the z-axis and the rope are both in the plane of the screen. And in this instance, we're defining the angle gamma. Gamma 2, we know, is equal to 60 degrees. And in this third figure, I'm making the x-axis and the rope in the plane of the screen. And in this case, we'll define a parameter alpha 2. But we don't know alpha 2 just yet, but it has to have a specific value because we've already specified beta 2 and gamma 2. And to show this, if you work with SOLIDWORKS very much, we could look at this, and in this image, I've got the x, y, and z axes, and I defined this angle, the 120 degrees, this is beta 2, the angle between the y-axis and the rope. This angle is 60 degrees, a little tough to tell, but this is gamma 2, the angle between the z-axis and the rope. And this 45 degrees, you might be able to see, is a little bit lighter in gray. And it's in gray, it's, SOLIDWORKS says it's a driven dimension. It means it depends on the values of beta 2 and gamma 2. And there can only be one value for that third dimension. So what we see is that using SOLIDWORKS, we come up with alpha 2, the angle between the x-axis and the rope, is equal to 45 degrees. If you'd like to find alpha 2 mathematically, again, we can use this trigonometric identity and solve for alpha 2. Plug in values for beta 2 and gamma 2, and what you'll find is that alpha 2 is indeed equal to 45 degrees. The reason we care about this is because we're trying to break f2 into its component forms. We're trying to find the scalars f2x, f2y, and f2z. Let's look at f2x, for example. If I know alpha 2 is equal to 45 degrees, then I would know that f2x is equal to f2, 400 pounds for this problem, times the cosine of alpha, or the cosine of 45 degrees. I could also do the same thing for F2Z. I'll just draw a right triangle here, and I know this angle is equal to gamma. So F2Z is equal to F2 times the cosine of gamma 2. So my scalars, I get F2X, F2Y, and F2Z. So now that I'm done decomposing F1 and F2 into their X, Y, and Z components, I'll just do the vector sum of these to come up with the resultant force. And that resultant force we see is just the sum of the three components and the magnitude of the resultant force. We just use Pythagorean theorem. We just take the square root of the sum of squares and we come up with a magnitude of 754 pounds. To come up with the coordinate direction angles for FR, we use the relationship for alpha R. It's just FRx divided by the magnitude. And for beta R, it's just FRy divided by the magnitude. And for gamma r, it's just fr z divided by the magnitude of the resultant force. 
So I get the three different angles, 68, about 78, and about 25, 26 degrees. So keep these three angles in mind. I use them to show physically what's going on. If we go back to SolidWorks, here's my two ropes to begin with. And what I'm going to do is add a third rope, and this will just be a hypothetical rope that acts in the direction of the resultant force. And this force I've highlighted in red. And what this means physically is if we took a force, if we took a third rope and got rid of the first two ropes, and we pulled on it with a magnitude of 754 pounds, and when I pull in that direction without the other two ropes, what I would find is that this configuration is exactly the same. The material down in here would feel no difference whether we pulled with the resultant force or if we pulled with the original two ropes. If I put those ropes back, one thing that might be of interest is to examine the fact that these three ropes are coplanar. So the resultant force is in the same plane as the first two ropes. And if you think about it, if we, instead of having vertical coordinate axes, we set up the first two coordinate axes in the plane of the rope, for in that situation, there's no vertical, or we would say no z component to the magnitude of those ropes, and we would find that the resultant force would have to be coplanar with the other two ropes. And one last thing to think about is the fact that for F1, we have a force of 600 pounds, whereas for F2, we only had a force of 400 pounds. So our resultant force tends to be a little bit closer to the first rope, which had a higher tension on it. And finally, I'm showing the resultant force in the coordinate directions, 68 degrees, 26 degrees, and our third angle was 78 degrees.